Hi everyone and welcome to Spray the World, the channel dedicated to street art and urban art. Today it's time for a new episode of Spray the World, where I show you and explain you some of the coolest wall in our city. Unfortunately, as you can see, I was not able to go live and show you the wall itself outside, thanks to an awful weather in our city of Paris. So I'll have to do it from my apartment, sorry about that. But don't worry, because today we're gonna take a close look at the first street art festival that took place in Paris last weekend, called the Festival. And I've got a lot of images to show you. So, here is my review of the Festival 2016. The festival took place last weekend along the Canal de Lourdes in the 19th arrondissement of Paris and was organized by the Wall Gallery and the association de l'Amour et des Murs. And the least we can say is that it was great. All along this canal, 8 spots were dedicated to more than 30 artists so they can paint in total legality in front of a crowd getting bigger hour after hour. The perfect weather on the first day contributed to the success of the festival alongside all the other events that were created for the occasion, such as workshop, rap concert energizing the crowd, a cappella group, slam, and of course spots where you could relax and have a beer in the sun. But overall the greatest things about this festival was to be able to watch the artists at work and also to be able to discuss with them about their work and their technique. So in this video I'll try to show you as many artists as possible that were there at the festival. Graffiti was by far the most represented in the festival, but with very different style. We had for example what I like to call abstract graffiti, with for example Romain Froquet, who is actually the only one who had a wall to paint on a roof, which is really cool. He was working above another artist called Theo Lopez, who does also abstract graffiti. Worth mentioning also the work of Basto, with this very colorful piece full of geometric form and also abstract. In a more classic style of graffiti, we had among others Benga, for example, a very enthusiastic guy. We also had Cray132 that created an amazing piece picturing Batman. Worth mentioning also Wire, Relax, Oster, Sonic, that completed a wall that we'll speak a bit later in the video that is really impressive. But I cannot speak about graffiti in this festival if I don't speak about two other artists that are kind of pioneers on the French graffiti scene, Tarek and King Bobo. But we'll speak about them a bit later in the video as we're gonna go through everyone's work. The college technique was also quite represented, with among others Naughty and Arrows and their Mythologeny series of work. Tok Tok was also there with his signature style characters picturing a zoo, I mean a prison. We had also JBC with his monumental work picturing a guy from the Mara 18, one of the most dangerous gang of Central and South America. But as far as college go, one of the pieces that impressed me the most was the one by Sacha Teboul with a very unique technique that I will explain a bit later as it is quite complicated. And for stencil we had among others Rays with this incredible portrait of an old man full of color splashes that is kind of his trademark. Yaps was also there with a collaboration work with Jungle and Mattel was also there putting some of his stencil characters on the other walls. Well that's it for the overview of the festival so now let's get more in the details. As I said, there were 8 spots dedicated to street art, and even though you know how much I love the number 8 by now, I'm not gonna do a top spread of the spots, but I'm gonna walk you through them so you can go and visit them later and know everything about the pieces that have been done there. Because remember that all the pieces are still there, so you can go anytime to see them. So if you take the map of the festival that you can still download on the website and I'll put the link in the description below, you'll see that the first spot is dedicated to Roma Froquet and Theo Lopez that perform two really abstract graffiti pieces. As you can see on the image that I'm showing you right now, Roma Froquet had to paint on a roof where he created this amazing abstract piece of shapes and lines and full of colors. I actually had a really cool talk with Romain Froquet during the festival when he came down to take a look from far away of his work, wondering if he had to paint the window or not, which he actually didn't do. And as you can see, the final result is really cool. Under Romain Froquet, Theo Lopez completed also an abstract work of graffiti. 
And what is really cool with the image that I'm showing you is that you can realize that the colors that they both use match and are kind of the same. I don't know if the two artists discussed about this before the event, but in the end it's really cool because it gives you the impression of a single piece. A bit down the canal, at the second spot of the festival, you have this work completed by Sébastien Leca. As you can see in the image that I'm showing you right now, it is a very colorful work and it pictures multiple and multiple fetus. Even though it's very colorful and therefore joyful, it kind of makes me uncomfortable and I guess this is because of the fetus. I can't really explain why, but this freaks me out a little bit, so let's go to spot number three. The third spot was technically dedicated to Naughty and Arrows and Talk Talk, artists that do college. Well, at least that's what the map of the festival says. In fact, the main work of Tok Tok during the festival is on the four spot, so we'll speak about it a bit later. Here, he just put a funny cactus giving free hugs. And as you can see on the image that I'm showing you, Tarek came to put a skull next to it. So basically, the main work on this spot was completed by Noti and Aros. And as you can see on the image that I'm showing you, he did college of his mythology work that combines popular culture and mythology and also religion. You can see, for example, this piece called Jeron Iron, mixing, of course, Iron Man and Native American culture. Iron Man, Geronimo, you get it? He also did a college of his latest creation called Flus, a mix of Flash and Zeus. Flash plus Zeus equals Flus. Spot number four on our map is quite a mix of technique and style. There is, for example, this amazing stencil work by Rays. And as you can see, it pictures an old man to which he had color splash, as you can see on the image that I'm showing you, creating in the end a powerful and colorful image. Probably one of my favorite one of the festival. Next to him, like I said before, that's where you'll find the main work of Tok Tok, where he completed a series of college picturing animals behind bar, recreating a zoo. Well, in fact, like you can see, it is not a zoo, but a prison to him. I like this piece because it's probably one of the only one in the festival that has a real message behind it. Alongside them, you had graffiti French pioneer Tarek that completed a series of skull, very colorful and also funny, which is kind of his signature style for the skulls. He completed those through the day, and as you saw before, he also went on other walls to put some of his skulls. Worth mentioning also this very cool scout character painted by Bab. And again, when you see with the image that I'm showing you where he started from to where it ended, it's really cool to see the evolution and the result in the end. And finally, on the other side of the wall, you have a collaboration work between Yaps and Jungle, a mix of graffiti and stencil. It was very nice to see them work and perform in front of the crowd and also take time to explain the stencil technique to the people who were stopping by. Anyway, overall this was clearly one of the main spots of the festival and you definitely need to go and check it out if you're in Paris. The fifth spot of the festival was dedicated to four artists. Two of them actually completed their work before the festival. I guess because they couldn't be there for the festival itself. Those are Joachim Romain with this very cool college as you can see and Stu with those two Japanese characters that seems to be very friendly to each other. The other two artists that were actually there for the festival were JBC with this monumental college picturing a guy from the Mara 18 and the other artist is Sasha Teboul. Sasha Teboul is probably one of the artists that impressed me the most during this festival because of the technique he used to complete his work. It is actually quite complex and I've never seen it before, but to summarize, it's like a reverse college. From what I understood, he basically glued his image with a specific product, but unlike classic college, the ink faces the wall. Then, by slowly removing the paper with a sponge and water, the ink stick to the wall, completing his work. And this is a very long and delicate process. I guess that's why he brought the boombox with him to keep him company, even though it was playing classic music, I guess also because it helps concentrate. Anyway, in the end the result is spectacular and it is definitely one of my favorite pieces of the festival. On the sixth spot of the festival you could find the work of Isa Zaro with this heart and an angel above it. 
and on each side of the heart you could find some more classic graffiti. The yellow one that you can see right now was created by T and the blue one was created by ERS. The seventh spot of the festival, if you look at the map, was technically dedicated to three artists, but actually two of them went to paint on the eighth spot. So I'll speak about their work when I'll do the eighth spot. So on the spot seven, you'll only find this piece by Behrens. Behrens picture here a spiral of fish that kind of recreates one of his earlier pieces from 2015 that he painted in Aubervilliers. But this time he kind of twisted it a bit, creating like a trompe l'oeil which is pretty cool. And finally, the eighth and last part of the festival is quite impressive, as technically, if you take a look at the map, there were supposed to be two artists, Wire and Cray 132. But in the end, in addition to Cray 132 and Wire, there was also Benga, Relax, Oster, Sonic, King Bobo, Basto, Swing, Yarps, Matelb, that came to paint on the wall and join the party. So this is clearly the spot of the festival with the most artists represented there. Craig 132 completed an impressive piece picturing this huge Batman character, which is also full of detail reminding you the old version of the hero. It was really cool to see him work and to see how much he pays attention to all the little details. And in the end, the result is just stunning as you can see in the image that I'm showing you. Just next to Cray 132, you can find the work of Basto that came to create an abstract work of graffiti, full of colors. And as you can see in the image that I'm showing you right now, Basto had to complete his work one shape at a time. And when you see how long it takes to just paint one shape, well, you can imagine how long it took him to complete the whole work with that many shapes. But in the end, the result is pretty cool and crazy. Next to Vesto, Wire completed the complex graffiti. It is always mind-blowing to see where the artist starts from, like in the image that I'm showing you right now, where you can barely see or imagine the final result, and when you actually seize it, well, it is just crazy. That's what I call talent. Next to Wire, as you can see, Oster and Relax were performing live and completed some really nice pieces also. Oster, for example, did this really cool blue graffiti and Relax, as you can see in the image that I'm showing you right now, carefully work on all the little detail of his masterpiece and in the end the result is just super great. Benga was also really cool to watch work. He looks so concentrated when he does those lines. It is like a challenge, you know, everything has to be perfect. And again, when you see where he started from and the result in the end, it is just mind blowing, especially for someone like me who has zero talent in drawing or painting. Finally, alongside all those artists, King Bobo and Sony completed two really great pieces. King Bobo's one is very easy to recognize as it is clearly written on it in a font that is easy to read, even if you're not used to graffiti. And the one by Sonic is really cool also. You can see the gangster with the hat, which is a classic figure in Sonic's work. Worth mentioning also on the 8th spot, the work by Swing that Swing by to put his green monster signature style character. And also the work of Yaps and Matev that I already spoke of that came to put a few stencils on the wall. So yes, in the end, the last spot of the festival is probably one of the most impressive one. And to be honest, it is my favorite one, with the numerous artists and style represented there. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to leave a thumbs up below and share it, of course. Please let me know in the comment which is your favorite wall and spot that I've showed you in the video. And remember that you can go anytime to see them. The Canal de Lourdes is waiting for you. If you haven't seen the previous episode of Spray the Wall, you can go and check it out. You'll see it is about Gainsbourg's house, another great spot for street art in Paris. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos to come. This is really the best way to show me your support. And remember that you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, where you'll see more pictures of the festival. So, until next time, don't forget to spray the wall. See ya!